Hi, I'm Pastor Zach here at New Heritage Church. I'm an intern here, and um, today we're going to be talking about being you in Christ and kind of what that looks like a little bit, a little bit different approach than what you might normally see. So if you want, you can turn to Hebrews 12, 1 through 2 with me, and um, we'll read what Hebrews has to say for us. Chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, we, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now this verse is it's very important. Obviously you can tell the first part when he means the, the great cloud of witnesses. He's referring to the great people of faith who came before us when he was talking in chapter 11. If you've ever read chapter 11, you will know some of these people like Samson, Abraham, Moses. There's just there's so many of them that he mentioned. Some of them he just mentioned. Some he tells about what they did and their great work of faith. And then it goes on to say that we have... Um, when it says lay aside every weight and the sin that ensnares now we all know what sin is and we know that it ensnares us and it makes it very tough but what, what he says is lay aside every weight now in the NIV it says hindrance something that hinders you that stops you so as a weight it would it would make it hard for you to do something and there are things in this world that make it hard for us to accomplish what we need to accomplish in Christ and be who we need to be as people, as who we are in Christ, and um, lay aside, it doesn't mean just lay aside next to you, it means to lay aside far from you. That's what the original word says, and the NIV puts it, um, throw it, it says throw off every hindrance, and um, very similar, very somewhat different, but still meaning to put it far from you, and that's what's important, is that you get it far from you, these things that try to weigh you down. And um, some of them can just be as simple as, as you can see within when you look at grass. There's weeds that grow up. You know, if you look at your life as that. Some areas that maybe grow better than others. You know, and we got to take care of those weeds, especially goat heads. And if you've ever lived in Washington, you know what goat heads are, okay? And they suck. They're terrible and they hurt, okay? Now, if they start growing in your grass, you got to take care of them. They're going to take over your grass because each little pricker is a seed. And then it spreads and it spreads and eventually those weights can lead to sin and we don't want that in our lives. So we got to make sure that we pull them out. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's busyness. Maybe you're too busy. You know, and you don't want to be too busy in your life. You know, most people who have ever left the church, they said, now, there are about 19% people who have left the church. 19% said they were too busy. 14% said they didn't believe in organized church anymore. And there's just many different things that they were hurt by the church, was 37%. Now, I want to go into something that will help us be able to continue to be us in Christ and not always just want to be able to leave the church at all times. So we're going to go to 2 Samuel, and um, 2 Samuel 6, 12 through 14. Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all, the, all that belongs to him because of the ark of God, so David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with gladness. And so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces that he sacrificed oxen and fattened, fattened sheep. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod. Now, David, he danced before the Lord, and this is so important. Because there are some people who don't like to dance, maybe even in the church, so they feel hindered that they can't do it. And we don't want to be able to hinder one another, and that's just how it should be. 
you know, and I love to dance before the Lord, but sometimes maybe I'm going to scare people or I'm afraid that they're going to judge me if that happens. So we don't want to be like that. So if you like to dance, dance before the Lord. Be you who you are in Christ and do it if it's something that you love to do. You got to learn to be able to change things up when you need it. Maybe in prayer, how you pray, you know, when you're praying. Pray for other people all the time. Don't just always pray for you. Because if we're going to truly say that our life is a relationship and not a religion, then we need to be like that, if you understand that. Now we say relationship, but you must act like it. I'm married, I've only been married for a year, but I have my traditions that I have with my wife. You know, we do our routines, we pray every night before we go to bed, but I don't always take her out, we don't always eat the same thing every day. So why would you do the same thing with the Lord every single day? Why wouldn't you change it up? You know, even when you read the Bible, why don't you listen to the Bible instead of just reading it? Listen to other preachers. Do different things and just change it up. Change your relationship up with Christ because you need to be strengthened in who you are in Christ. And you must find that for yourself. So now we're going to turn to um, 1 John 4.4. 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in, in you is greater than he who is in the world. And this is what's important. Christ is in us, and we walk with Him every single day, and it's important that you remember His love that He has shed on the cross for you, and everything that He has ever done, and it's important to know that He has overcome, and that through you, you have something greater than what this world ever has, and that every weight, and that every hindrance, and even every sin can be thrown off, can be cast off, can be laid aside because of Jesus Christ. We have to remember that as we walk every single day and remember that it's a relationship with Christ, with Christ. And to be you in Christ. Be you every single day. Now we want you to be you. And if you like to worship, well, we hope you enjoy this. Tim Hawkins on hand raising. See how you like it. And I know that each church has its own worship style, you know, which is cool. Some people are more expressive in worship. Some people more subtle. And it's all good. Um, I go to a church that's pretty expressive in worship. It's, um, it's a hand raising church. That's what it is, right? That's what, you know, anybody here go to a hand-raising church? Am I here? Sweet. Who here does not go to a hand-raising church? <laughs> Some of you are trying, you're like, I can't. I want to, Tim, I need to get some momentum. Totally cool. But hey, if you're not used to going to a hand-raising church, you wanna go and join us. Feel free to join us, but don't feel like you gotta join right in, okay? Start slow. We got a lot of different hand raises that we use. We actually have names for our hand raises. So I'm gonna walk you through real quick, okay, what they are, just to let you know. Say you're at my church, music is rocking. Start slow, hands in the pockets, little elbow flap, you're fine. Very subtle, get warmed up, get your heart rate up. When you're warmed up, start with the first one. Ready, carry the TV. Carry the TV, that's our first one. Very subtle. Go to big screen, big screen, a little wider. Next one's my fish was this big, my fish was this big. If you're a liar, you can go out there, that's fine, don't worry about it. Jesus loves you, Grace. Next one's hold my baby, hold my baby. Got dueling light bulbs, that's our next one, dueling light bulbs. We got goalpost, everybody knows goalpost. Throw in a heartburn, a lot of people like to do heartburn. Double heartburn, right back to go post. What's my favorite? Mufasa. Mufasa, that's my favorite. The circle of life. Tim, can you go higher? Yes, you can. You can take one hand, go a bunch of different stuff. Pointer, hatchet, schoolroom. Release the doves, give the Lord a high five. Press it out. A lot of women like to wash the window. Wash the window. And when you're comfortable there, go for the big three. Village people, Rocky, touchdown. There you go, there's your big three. You're set. <laughs> you're a pro. Be you every single day. Now if you enjoyed this, you can uh, obviously see more of Pastor Gordon. And uh, you can visit us at our webpage at heritagetc.org. 
And you can also visit us on our web on our Facebook page, facebook.heritagetc slash heritagetc. Yeah. And then you can also call Pastor Gordon if you'd like to talk to him at 509-628-2274. And then we'd love to see you at the track at 10 o'clock on Sundays in Pasco. We're having a great time, fellowship with Pastor Gordon, and it's just great. And we'd love to see you. Thank you. Thank you.